people in our work come for a lot of reasons, you know, and yes, uh, they have challenges and health conditions. Uh, but instead of wanting to heal, I want them to learn the formula on how to heal. I want them to learn the formula on how to create reality. I want them to learn the formula that there is a door to other dimensions that they can create independent of any exogenous substance and release latent systems in the brain that causes them to realize they're not a linear being living a linear life. They're a dimensional being living a dimensional life and it only takes one of those experiences where you have an alteration in your identity that you can't go back to being the same person again. Now the game changes now because I've seen this so many times when that person runs into the divine and there's an arousal that takes place in their nervous system. And I'm not talking about a little energy. I'm talking about energy that's so outside of normal. But the arousal isn't coming from fear, which normally creates arousal. It's not coming from aggression, which normally creates arousal. It's not coming from pain. They are running into information. They're running into something profound and the arousal is creating ecstasy. The arousal is creating bliss. The arousal is so profound. The feeling that they're having isn't coming from anything out there. Mm -hmm. It's coming somehow from within them. And they get a taste of that and they're less seduced by the outer world. They know where to get it. And now they have a romance with the divine. They have a date with the divine every day because the process of creation in connecting to that field should be ecstatic. The process of healing another person should be bliss because you need to connect to that field and create from the field instead of from matter. So there's so much cool research that changes our mind about that because it's not matter that's emitting a field. It's the field that's creating matter. You teach people to change the field. You change the field, you change matter. And understanding that is a reversal in navigating in a realm beyond space and time that once you can get beyond your attention on your body, get beyond your attention on different objects and people and things at certain times and places in your environment, no longer anticipating the next moment or living in the past, and a person can get trans transcendental beyond their identity. Uh, they start passing through an eye of the needle and that is their connection to that unifying field, that invisible field of energy that actually is connecting everything physical and material. And you can't use your senses when you're there. In fact, when you are there, there's a whole nother set of rules to execute in. There's no place to go. How could you go if there's no space? If there's no space, there's no time. Every thought has a frequency and being able to create from that place is why we're here. And so then when you see a person feel whole, and we measure their oxytocin levels. It's not just a little oxytocin. The oxytocin is 200 times normal. And oxytocin signals nitric oxide. And nitric oxide signals a chemical called endothelial derived relaxing factor. And that causes the arteries in your heart and your lungs to literally open up. And just like your sexual organs get engorged with energy and fluid and blood, when that center is aroused with the same intensity, you have a fullness in your heart. It's, a, it's physiological. And when oxytocin is released, it's impossible to hold a grudge. You cannot hold a grudge because you wouldn't want to trade this feeling by judging another person. You, you, wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to trade this feeling for any condition in your environment. And this is the beginning of unconditional. This is the beginning of our divinity. So when you have all this energy in your heart, and oxytocin levels are elevated. This is a different consciousness. Now, the only thing you want to do is give. You want to say, I feel so amazing, and I want you to feel the way I feel. So here, I'll give this to you. So now people come to our work to help others. People come to this work because they're not so interested in the material things, although if it got them here, and they learn the formula, and they learn how to create, once you get that, now, that game's over. Now you want to make a difference. You want to leave a legacy. You want to contribute. You want to help somebody. And we bring children in at the end of the event and we heal them. 
of really serious health conditions. And we have really profound and prestigious universities in the United States saying, what in the heck are you guys doing? Like, we want to come and study this because it's so phenomenological. Now you're being a part of something great. So yeah, it may be the sports car. It may be the new relationship. It may be healing your body. But then when that happens, now what? What are you going to do now? Exactly. I mean, what are you going to do when you have everything? What are you going to do now? You're, you're, the next thing is, how am I going to make a difference? We're wired to care for one another, to be kind to one another, to heal one another, to shine for one another. So to show other people they can shine. That's what the living organism does when they're not in fear. And they're not in aggression and hatred and prejudice. And, all those things that create division. So, so when that person runs into that experience of the divine and their brain goes into an aroused state of gamma, they're getting a biological upgrade. I can guarantee you that some health condition will be eliminated because they just ran into wholeness and their body will become more whole. So they could do all the diets, all the chemotherapy, all the nutrition, everything, and they're handling that health condition matter to matter and when you change that anything in your life matter to matter there's a long space between cause and effect between it's thought dense. and experience it's some, sometimes so long you forget what your dream was mm -hmm. but when you run into it and you produce an immediate effect now you're doing it in no time it's happening in the moment and if you can capture that and you see the brain go into these elevated states of coherent gamma patterns 200, 300, 400, 500 standard deviations outside of normal. That person can't make their brain do that. That's a subjective experience that we're capturing objectively. And we say to that person, what was that? And it's inevitable. They don't, they don't have the words to describe what a mango tastes like. They don't have the words to describe what the divine is. You got to just experience it. So then that person that stands on the stage that has Parkinson's disease or had Parkinson's disease that's a 76 year old female that can't blow, couldn't blow her nose, couldn't swallow, couldn't chew her food, couldn't stand up. One moment running into the divine and next thing you know she's on the stage telling her story and she's not young and she's not buffed and she doesn't look like a vegan and she's not dressed like everybody that cares about that. She's just, you would walk right past her but when she's talking and I'm looking out in the audience I'm looking at 1,500 people leaning in. Nobody has got their eyes off of her because she's the example of truth. And that's the four-minute mile. Puncture right through there. That's a, that's a piercing through a layer of consciousness. And that leaves a footprint in consciousness. And there's someone in the audience with Parkinson's disease looking at her going, well, if she can do it, I can do it. And here comes the four-minute mile. As soon as it's broken, the next person does it. So by the end of the event... There's so much love in the room. There's so much energy in the room because people feel so incredible that they're, 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 not, they're not attached to their past any longer. They're, they're so connected to their, they're, they're so connected to their future that they stop telling the story of their past. They're telling the story of their future. They're no longer believing in their past. They're believing in their future. They're no longer romancing their past, they're in a romance with their future. And if oxytocin levels are up and it's the chemical that bonds, and then you're gonna believe in that future you're creating with all of your heart, it better be opened and activated and we're gonna measure it. And I'm gonna tell you, you're doing it or you're not. And so then people start realizing it was never about that. It was about who they became, that we overcome that we overcome, that we overcome that week, we overcome, we overcome. I give people numerous opportunities to get beyond themselves, numerous opportunities to connect with themselves. I want them to get frustrated. I want them to get impatient. I want them to get overly analytical because that's the end of their belief. And then finally, when they finally make up their mind to let go and just do it, and they run into that feeling, they run into that experience, they're all in. It's, they, you think they, you think they, they don't want a sports car anymore they don't want they want that whatever that was and if it comes with a transcendental moment when they come back to their senses from that inner experience their spectrum of reality is broadened they're seeing things they had never seen before because their brain wasn't wired to see it but it didn't come from the environment it came from their inner environment that transcendental moment now is producing a feeling a frequency that is so unusual it's so much joy so much bliss, so much ecstasy. I've watched people 
have to stop it because it's way bigger than them. Now, I would consider that a good problem to have. <laughs> you measure that person's immune system. You measure the changes in their heart rate variability. Not a little amplitude, huge amplitudes. That person is feeling a lot of love. And imagine it's a man. Imagine a man whose heart is open that wide. They, they sob with, with the freedom to be able to not care what they look like. We're trying to fit into some paradigm or mold. So then a new consciousness in that footprint is emerging and we have scientific evidence. I can tell you can make your brain work better in a week. You can make your heart more coherent. You can change the field around your body. You can strengthen your immune system. You can change your gene expression. You can lengthen your life. You can create so many oxidative changes in your cells. We have great research to prove that. That's the truth of who you are. That's the truth, that miracle within you. That evidence is the backbone that gives people permission to try it out. It's the language. Then you see someone standing on the stage telling their story in testimony, whether it's stage four cancer, whether it's MS, whether it's blind people seeing, deaf people hearing. You can't go back to being the same person after that. Evidence is the loudest voice. And so then when we begin to make those inroads and the footprint exists in consciousness and you're witnessing it in three-dimensional reality, the, the, the illusion of limitation begins to change. And now all you wanna do is you crave the unknown. So people in our work don't get up in the morning and go, oh God, I gotta do my meditation today. <laughs> no, they're not doing that. They're, they, their body is waking them up saying, get out of bed because they don't want the magic to end. And when you start seeing the gap between cause and effect, thought and experience closing down, you're moving closer to the divine. And when that happens, all the things you thought you want, you no longer want because the overcoming process leading to who you become Nobody can take that away from you. So we practice it in, in our seated meditations. We practice it standing and walking. You better walk as it. And you better be able to embody it and practice doing it with your eyes open. So when you return back to your life, when you walk from your house to your car, you're, work, you're walking in the energy of your future. And if you keep doing that, that's going to become a habit. And people are going to start looking at you going, something's different about you. You know why? because you're no longer showing up equal to their memory of you. You're, something's different about you. You're unpredictable. It's not what you're saying any longer. It's what you're, who you are. And so that person then is off their timeline. They're not headed to that same future. And all I wanna do in a week-long event is bump everybody off that timeline into a new future. Some, some people, huge degrees. You know, stage four cancers, tumors disappearing. You listen to that story of the person on the stage, your next meditation, you are not gonna go half in. You're gonna go all in. And that's all I want is I want people to go all in. I wanna provide people with my greatest understanding of the truth and then numerous opportunities to experience it, nothing more. And when the magic starts to happen, it's beyond, way bigger than me, it's beyond my control. All I wanna to do is provide the environment where they feel safe enough to begin to create.